Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Before we do begin today's video, make sure you guys are going down below and smashing that subscribe button. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year and know we can do it. Make sure you drop a early like as well. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my updated settings for Season 5 inside of Modern Warfare. The were settings I use, which I probably think work best for me in this game. I've messed around with settings all the way through this year and this is probably definitely what I'm going to be sticking with till the end of the year. I've seen a lot of other people doing this and you guys seem to love it. Well, not my my fans but other people's fans love seeing settings videos so I'm hoping you guys will too. Okay without further ado we're gonna hop straight into the settings right now and as you can see this is my settings. I play on a default button layout, no changes whatsoever. I've said before I do use a scope controller so I do have the paddles on the back. Uh, I do have three paddles now instead of two, so that's kind of an update. I have this paddle here as triangle, so I can play it up while still moving around in Warzone. Really, really big play, you know, it does come in handy quite a lot. Stick layout is preset. If you don't have a, a scuff controller, though, there is a few variations you can have, uh, like such as stick and move when you use R3 to jump. So you still don't have to take your fingers off of the analog sticks, or if you're a drop shot, you can have tactical which will make R3 a crouch slash prone button, which I used to play quite a lot back in the day. But since I got a scuff, I don't play it at all. I obviously just no reason to, I just play default. My dead zone is a 0.05. I've not messed around with this whatsoever. It just works well, it's what I'm used to. So this is kind of personal preference. I play in 0.05. If you've never touched it, never don't I wouldn't even bother changing it. I doubt it's gonna make the slightest little bit of difference. It's one of them things I don't really know to be honest with this one. I just keep it standard, works well for me. Next we have my sensitivity in the previous settings video I did it was on a 12 super high sensitivity it allowed me to play very 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 aggressively uh, but there was times where I feel like I should be getting a kill I should be hitting these shots simple shots easy shots and I've been missing them just for the simple fact my sensitivity was just too high yeah I was used to the sensitivity a majority of the time I would land these shots but the odd time where I wouldn't I was like damn this is not great and I started playing a lot of more game battles this year so I did tone down the sensitivity massively obviously you have to be as accurate as possible and six I'm not missing it's honestly works so well for me I really really enjoy playing with sensitivity now I'm used to it I can still play aggressive with this sensitivity definitely definitely the ideal middle ground if you want to have a kind of high sensitivity but still be extremely extremely accurate I would recommend a six but it is down to personal preference but I would definitely try out a six my ADS sensitivity is a one uh, don't change this, I've never changed this, it just works well for me, I'm used to it, so obviously it's a very low sensitivity when you're aiming, being able to be as accurate as possible, it definitely is key, so if you've not changed this, you probably are used to it, I wouldn't really bother changing with it, but I would also recommend experimenting around with it, seeing what works best for you, because you never ever know, it might change, you never know. My aim response is cur curve type is standard, I have seen a couple of people playing linear, I've seen a couple of people playing dynamic, for me it's standard, just keep everything standard, it's what I'm used to, obviously we've never had these kind of options inside of Call of Duty before. Before, so I'm just sticking with standard how it always is definitely definitely works best for me I don't think I'll ever ever change this controller vibration is disabled this is obvious it is a must you will not realize until you disable this thing I played the controller vibration on all the way to Black Ops 4 last year I loved controller vibration I don't know what it was it made me feel more engaged with the game and whenever it wasn't on I felt like I wasn't like shooting it felt so weird not having it on but now it's disabled I'm way way more accurate and you wouldn't believe this like what's that got to do with it but as your controller is vibrating it's also going to be moving your finger ever so slightly um, and it's going to knock your aim off a little bit you might not notice it you probably won't notice it but until you disable it and get used to it you'll be a lot more accurate believe me I try this myself I, I didn't believe it at first and I was beaming once I turned it off and got used to it honestly definitely have this disabled it's a must my aim assist is standard I am in a war zone group on Facebook and it rattles my gears more than anything people say they're too good to have aim assist like I'm, I don't need aim assist I'm not shit this makes zero sense. The pro players in this game use aim assist. You're literally turning something off to give you a huge, huge, huge disadvantage. Like, unless you play mouse and keyboard, obviously you don't need aim assist with mouse and keyboard as much. Uh, I don't even know if they do aim assist. I don't think they do aim assist with mouse and keyboard, I'll be honest. But if you're playing a controller, you turn this off, you're just giving yourself a massive handicap. It's like playing, being a football player and think, oh, I'm too good at being at football, I'm just going to chop my leg off. That is literally what it is, like, makes no sense. Make sure you've got aim assist on. I have it on standard, I don't know what the other ones do, I don't mess around with that, I've never had that, you know, never had the option before. Keep it standard, 
you're stupid if you turn it off. Bottom line, you're stupid. These next sections are just sort of personal preference. I just have it all standard. I've not changed any of it. Uh, you know, tap to reload. I think I changed that actually. I think it might have been hold. Maybe, I don't know. Tap to, re you, tap to reload or use something. It's just the tap. You don't have to hold the button. It makes it a lot quicker. All these are the same. You know, I've never messed with these. I presume they'll be the same on your account. All personal preference these ones. It's not going to affect how you play. It's not going to make you play better. It's just personal preference. Movement. My slide behavior is on tap. It usually is hold, but I play on tap just for the simple fact I can slide cancel a lot easier with the tap one. Obviously, if you know what slide cancel is. It basically resets your tactical spring, allows you to ADS quicker coming out of a slide. It basically gives you such a huge advantage. And as you slide canceling, if someone tries to shoot you while slide canceling, it'll give them a weird animation on their screen where you sort of crouched slash sprinting. Super, super weird, makes them a little bit harder to hit you. Obviously, don't make you invincible, but definitely something to get used to if you haven't before. Slide canceling is a must, so I would recommend putting this on tap and practicing your slide cancels. Auto move forward is disabled, obviously, and automatic spring is disabled, obviously. Definitely not for me. Obviously, I want to sprint when I want to sprint. If I don't, I'm not, don't want to. Vehicle camera recenter is enabled, so it will just reset at the camera. Um, obviously, as you're driving, I don't think I've actually messed with this one, or maybe I have, I have no idea. Parachute auto deploy is enabled as well. You don't want to be dropping into war zone and dying. Why would you want to do that? Just have it auto deploy. Gives you that second sense of security. Now, I didn't cover this in my last settings video. I don't know why. I just completely forgot about it. But we're going to general settings. I play on a 56 brightness. Definitely brighter than I should have it. But I like to have my screen a lot brighter. It's something I've always do. I don't know why. It just like, helps me see a little bit better. This game is very dull. So having the brightness up is a help to me personally. My film game is on zero. Just to make it a little bit more crisp. The game a little bit more crisp for me. I like this a lot better. Tool tips enabled. I don't know what that is. I don't think I've ever changed that. I don't know. I can't remember seeing a tool tip in this game. Apart from when I first started it up. Subtitles is disabled. Why would I want subtitles popping up in multiplayer? But it is personal preference. Language is obviously English. Colorblind is disabled. I did play on this one. The Jura to, to I don't even know how you pronounce that. But as you can see, if you've seen the menu here, it does change a little bit. And it does make the game look a little bit more vibrant. I just didn't like the yellow uh, name tags above the enemies, so I just definitely I just turned it off. But if you do want the game to be a bit more vibrant, definitely have that on. Did D1, I forget how you're not even going to pronounce it again, and Film Game on Zero, it makes the game look a lot more vibrant. My colorblind target is interface, I don't know if I've changed that myself, I've no idea, but these are all personal preference again. Apart from world motion blur, that is a disabled, as you're running around the map and you're looking around, having the world motion blur on, you're going to be not see the enemies, basically, it's going to be a lot harder to see someone like sat in a window, or camp in a corner, you're not going to see them as easily, and it's definitely going to, you know give you a disadvantage yes the game probably does look a little bit nicer with it on maybe in my opinion I think it does but it definitely gives you a huge disadvantage same with weapon motion blur I don't know why you want that one on just have these disabled it's gonna help you out massively I have my mini map on square uh, you can see a little bit more of the map if you look at them side by side you can see more area with the square mini map so that's just what I opt for and that's what we're coming I think I had the square mini map majority of the time in the older games I'm not 100% sure. Minimap rotation is enabled uh, so obviously it's going to change as I'm changing it's just something I have on. Personal preference again but I feel like enabled would definitely be the way to go. The compass I have letters just easier for calling out in Warzone if I see someone west I can say west instead of 270 you know uh, most people play on letters so that's why I keep it on so if I say 270 it might throw my teammates off it could be one of them. Text chat enabled obviously profanity filter I would say if someone's swearing at me I want to see it. Dismember and gore effects, yes I have that enabled, so obviously I think that's to be tracer bullets and things, they'll be enabled, so definitely have that on. On audio now, we have the audio mix, boost high is definitely the way to go, uh, or boost, boost or boost high, I have it on boost high, uh, helps you hear things a lot better. I have the master volume on 75, this is personal preference, the game volume in this game is very, very loud. 75 allows me to hear everything, I can hear everything perfectly, but obviously I do have a pretty decent headset. If you guys don't have a decent headset or you're playing with Apple earphones, definitely up the volume, it will help you out massively. Music volume is 62, I just turn that down randomly, obviously I'm not too bothered about the music being too loud. Dialogue is 100, so if someone's calling like a VTOL in or UAV, I can hear that one crisp. And the effects volume is 70, I think that might be like, I don't even know what that is, maybe like a frag? Clipping, unclipping, I don't know, I have that on 70, so pretty loud again, so I can hear that. And if you didn't know, having, I think this is like reloads and things like that, maybe, um, you can hear reloads and get a gauge on the enemy, especially in Station Destroy, you might have, someone might be crouching in a corner, but they might reload and that's going to tell you where they are. Obviously, you don't have to listen to footsteps and that could give you a big advantage. Not many people listen out for that. I've won many rounds of Search and Destroy in game battles just by hearing somebody reload, not even moving. 
definitely comes in clutch. Juggernaut music enabled, obviously you gotta have that cool vibe when you're using the Juggernaut. Rarely use it, but when you're using it, you got that cool vibe. Kit marker sound effects, I have it on Modern Warfare. Uh, I have changed it to classic, and I have, I've not had it on non, I don't like having no hit markers, noise, uh, but I, didn't really, I couldn't really tell the difference, so I just kept it on Modern Warfare. Voice chat is enabled, obviously, my mic volume is on free, uh, voice chat volume is 120, microphone 120, and voice chat effect is no effect. I did try it on stealth comms, and I've tried it on classic chatter. I didn't hear any, any difference, I don't know if why but i just didn't hear any difference trying them out but yeah that's it for my updated setting try them out for yourself mess around with your settings maybe try some of mine out definitely definitely might help you especially with the volume and the other little things maybe not so much sensitivity and that's how the controls because that can come down to personal preference but having like your volumes right you know the color blind filter how the game's looking the brightness and the weapon motion blur having them like same as mine will probably definitely give you an advantage 100 percent it could be holding yourself back by not having them settings turned off like the the controller vibration, you might not see me, you might not realise at first, aim assist, if you have aim assist off, unsubscribe, right now you're dumb, Oof, maximum dumbness, I can't even explain it, it gets me so mad, but yeah, apart from that guys, thank you guys ever so much for watching, let me know what your settings are down in the comments below, and if you did follow some of these settings, let me know as well, and if it did help, let me know as well, but yeah, apart from that guys, thank you guys ever so much for watching, I hope to catch you guys on the next one, peace.